I have been consumed. Whatever remains of my voice is now hidden beneath the deafening buzz of 80,000 souls. My body is now a vessel for something much greater than myself. My sense of individuality has been martyred for the greater whole. Yet beneath the cacophony of the many-footed hive that has taken control, there still is a trace of something human. It always sneaks up on you, doesn't it? You go through your whole life thinking you've gotten used to being single, that all of your feelings of the past flames have gone dormant, but then February 14th rolls around and you get that feel, that scorching fire of loneliness. Out of nowhere, the whole world decides to sing praises of their love life, and you're reminded of just how lonely you are. It's been three years since we split, and I want to believe that I've been getting better, but every year the wounds are reopened. Valentine's Day always provides me with a sense of dread. Seeing all of these happy people write posts about how fulfilled they are in their relationships makes me feel like I've failed as a human being. This year, however, there was an extra layer of dread. This year, there was a stinging suspicion that Ali would get engaged. In the morning, I couldn't get out of bed. The initial torrent of romantic social media posts had me paralyzed. The only way that I could get through the day without breaking down is to find a distraction, something to help me block out everyone else's happiness. And as I laid in bed scrolling through the internet, it came to me. A headline to answer all of my woes. St. Valentine is also the patron saint of beekeepers. Enjoy a romantic evening, but don't forget, the bees are going extinct. The bees are going extinct. The headline gave me the strength to rise out of bed. As I ate breakfast, I read half a dozen articles about how important the bees are to the planet's ecosystem. The scientific evidence was overwhelming. Bees were dying at an unprecedented rate. Something had to be done. By the time I got into the office, I made a conscious decision. This Valentine's Day was not about love. It was about bees. I spent the entire morning chucking out bee facts. Did people know that most of the world's food supply relied on bees? Did they know that 40% of all bees in the United States had died between 2018 and 2019? Could they believe that no one was doing anything about it? There was something tranquil about the thought of impending ecological disaster. If our entire civilization ceased to exist, then there wouldn't be ex-girlfriends to worry about. I, Ali wouldn't be falling in love with someone else because she'd be dead. Hell, it seemed silly to worry about her even while she was alive. It didn't matter if she was spending her evenings with some hunk, eating mangoes and having amazing sex. There were bigger issues at hand. The bees were dying. My newfound bee obsession managed to shield me from all the notions of small talk through the moorings, but by the time I went into the break room for lunch, the Valentine's Day mood became inescapable. The break room was covered in pink streamers, a stack of heart-shaped cookies was on the table for anyone to grab, everyone was chatting away about their happy relationships. These people didn't care about the world ending. All they wanted to talk about were their plans for the evening. No one wanted to talk about the bees. Being in that room made me think about my own evening plans. I grabbed my sandwich and went outside. The park was calmer. There was the occasional sighting of people holding hands, but the faint smell of exhaust fumes helped me focus on the real issue. It didn't matter that I was single. What really mattered was how our species was destroying the planet. Everything around me was the product of human ingenuity. The slick cars, the impressive high-rises, even the park I was sitting in, they were all monuments to human inventiveness. In just a couple centuries, we had managed to take the planet from a place where nature tried to murder us at every step to a world where people could tweet and jump out of planes for fun. It was a shame that our drive towards innovation was also responsible for the, the pesticides, for the pollution, for the impending death of the bees. My thoughts about the terrifying nature of humanity had woven themselves into a like-worthy Facebook status. After I finished my sandwich, I shared a couple of bee-related articles and then thumbed my philosophical treatise into existence. I secretly hoped that Ali would stumble upon my thought piece and spend the night thinking about the plight of the modern bee. I was meant to be back at work. My musings had made me lose track of time. Yet, 
As I got up to leave the park, I noticed something. A lone bee sat beneath my bench, motionless. Seeing a bumblebee in February would have been bizarre ten years ago, but the concept of a cold winter is something that is slowly thawed from reality into the realm of childhood memory. I crouched down and observed a casualty of the ecological disaster that I had helped perpetuate. I poked it. The stinger of the little hairy creature sluggishly reached for my finger. Its wings dragged across the concrete as it attempted to defend itself, but it was clear that the bee was scarcely conscious. I snapped a picture of it and then rushed over to a nearby corner store. This little guy was not going to die on my watch. All the articles suggested that the best way to help a tired bee was to provide it with a mixture of water and sugar. At first the bee was motionless. I was scared that it had died while I was out buying supplies, but after a while, its antennae started to move. Within half an hour, it was on its feet and ready to fly away. I live streamed the entire affair. When I returned to work, there were some intrusive questions about how I spent my lunch break, but I managed to sidestep everything by saying I had a personal emergency. I went through the rest of my workday knowing that whilst everyone else was slaving away for their corporate overlords, I had actually made a difference. I didn't check any of my notifications until I returned back home. I wasn't helping the bees for clout. I was helping them because it was the right thing to do. I was helping them because I wanted to live in a world where my grandchildren would be able to feast on honey. I would have been content with doing my part without any attention from the world, but being public about it helped spread awareness for their plight. When I finally checked up on my post, the engagement was off the charts. I was the champion of the bees. Nearly a hundred people had heard my message. The articles that I shared got reposted a dozen times. My status update had instigated a lively discussion. I knew that somewhere out there during these stupid candlelit dinners, people would be talking about how Monsanto was responsible for the plight of our little hairy friends. I scrolled up and down my newsfeed, drinking the sweet nectar of success. Then I saw it. Her hand. The hand I nervously held on prom night. There was a ring on it. 600 likes. 300 comments. I slammed my laptop shut and paced around the room. I tried focusing on, on climate change, on corporate lobbyists paying politicians to turn a blind eye to harmful pesticides, on the ice caps melting, but I couldn't. The thought of Ali getting engaged burrowed into my mind like a brain parasite. A film reel of all our happy moments played in my head. Our first date, the first time we said our I love you's, our trip to the mountains, the sex. All of these memories played on and on and on in my head, but it was as if someone else had spliced me out. And in my steed there was someone taller, someone cooler, someone who had their shit together, someone who would be a great dad. I felt sick. My stomach spun between a dizzying emptiness and a sudden urge to vomit. They would get married. They would have kids, they would have grandkids, their grandkids would eat honey. I hugged my toilet bowl and dry heaved. I could feel the world spinning on without me. After the panic attack had passed, I returned to my bedroom and shut off the lights. My mouth tasted of acid. My eyes were burning. There were not enough tissues in the world to clear out my nose. I was exhausted, but sleep refused to come. All I could think about was Ali being happy with someone who wasn't me. For the past three years, I had lived in quiet hope of us getting back together, of a random text coming through one morning where she would announce that she had missed me and thought about me every single day since the breakup. I was now faced with the cold truth. Our feelings weren't mutual. The sound was imperceptible at first. I was too busy thinking of the sex Allie was having, but the tap slowly grew louder. I held my breath and listened. The sound was coming from my room. A lone bumblebee was tapping its little stinger on the glass of my window. I got out of bed and turned on my light. Before the absurdity of a lone bee traveling to the sixth floor of an apartment complex could dawn on me, three friends joined the bee. They tapped away at the window chaotically as if they wanted something. 
More bees materialized out of the night and drifted towards my window. The world outside was starting to disappear beneath a layer of black and yellow. Whatever camaraderie I had felt for these bees was now gone. Those little stingers were aimed right at me. Memories of wasps and hornets nests filled my head with terror. I ran through my apartment, making sure that all my windows were closed. They weren't just knocking on my bedroom. Every window in my apartment was covered in a thick layer of bees. As I moved through my apartment, their stingers reached a thunderous roar. I stood in the center of my apartment, as far away from the windows as possible. My arms started to itch. Memories of previous stings were preparing me for the pain. It felt as if there was a unity in the stinger knocks now, as if there was a voice hiding beneath their cacophony. But my mind refused to accept it. There was a faint buzzing sound coming from beneath my front door. The knocking of the stingers had reached so high a frequency that I was barely able to comprehend my own thoughts. My apartment door gently shook. Looking through the peephole revealed a blackness, a blackness that shifted around with the tenacity of a thousand feet. Let us in. I could hear the voice clearly now. Beneath the hive lured something sentient, something sweet. As soon as I focused on it, the noise of the stingers died down. A wave of syrupy calm spread through my veins. We know you are troubled. We know you feel pain. The same skin which itched out a fear of being stung was now draped in a warm blanket of cosmic harmony. It felt like I was a part of something much bigger, something much better. I drifted towards my bedroom window. The knocking of the stingers had stopped. Only a faint buzz remained. You have helped us. Now let us help you. Let us ease your mind. Let us lead you on your journey. I opened the window. There is so much work to be done. They covered me. Before I could comprehend what was happening, my body was coated in an army of tiny feet. My apartment disappeared beneath a carpet of fine yellow hair. My knees buckled beneath the wave of sweet ecstasy. My skin could no longer perceive a difference between me and the bees. My jaw relaxed. My mouth filled with movement. We can save it all. If we work together, we can save everyone. You have done good work, but together we can do so much more. A faint memory emerged. In some other life, I sat in a cinema. Ali was leaning on me. A bit of popcorn was stuck in the back of my throat, and the audience laughed at something on the screen. I, I washed down the popcorn with her soda. Yet the memory drifted away as gently as it emerged. This didn't happen to me. This didn't happen to us. They made their way down our throat. Each arrival sending another ripple of pleasure through our body. We could feel them in our veins. We felt whole. And then the room was empty. But we didn't feel alone. A sense of wholeness radiated through our entire universe. Do you want to save my? Somewhere within us, there is still the hint of a person, but. He is irrelevant. If we let the bees die, the food chain of this planet will collapse. We will work together to keep us all alive. Our grandchildren will taste honey.